I am going to take you through the process of making a sourdough bread boule for the very first time. Now this recipe is long, but it is a simple one. And for those of you who do not have food scales, it's perfect because we are gonna be doing this one with measuring cups. So let's get into it. The first thing we have to do is we have to feed our sourdough starter. And this is kind of frustrating because you have to wait on it to wake up and make all this bubbles, but it is very, very important. So my starter is not starving but it hasn't been fed since yesterday. So this is my starter. He lives in this jar right here and I'm going to feed him a third cup of flour and a little bit under one third cup of water. Okay, so like this, here it is. Pass it in. And now I'm gonna take about one third cup of water, a little bit less than a third. Just a little bit less than a third. And now, so this is considered feeding it. Now you take something that is plastic or wooden, um, not metal, because metal can interact with the sourdough yeast. And now we mix it. So all we're doing is we're mixing it up, we're feeding that sourdough starter. It's going to eat up the sugars, the yeast is gonna be very, very happy, and it's gonna start creating a lovely, bubbly texture. Now I'm going to leave my starter on the counter for two to four hours, and then I will come back and I'll check on it and make sure that it has really lovely bubbles and texture, meaning that it's so alive and active. And then we're going to start the actual making dough process. Like I said earlier, this recipe is very simple, very few ingredients, but it's just a long process. So right now it's 345, and the bread itself will not be ready till tomorrow. It has been about two hours. It is actually 5.45 now, and the starter is really nice and bubbly. Let me show you. For this recipe, you will need active sourdough starter, fine ground sea salt, bread flour or all-purpose flour or a mix of the both, and filtered water. So first you need to get one fourth cup of active sourdough starter and we will measure it out with a measuring cup and pour it into one and a half cups of filtered water. Pour it in and you can scrape out what's remaining in the measuring cup with your fingers. Next take a utensil and mix it around so it's nicely dispersed throughout the liquid. Add two teaspoons of salt mix it up into the starter liquid and then we're going to add four cups plus two tablespoons of the bread flour because we're not using a food scale we're going to gently measure out the flour into the measuring cups using a spoon and then you're going to level it off with a knife this helps us prevent overpacking the flour and making the bread more dense than it needs to be Now you want to mix all the ingredients until there's no more dry flour left on the bottom of the bowl. We are not trying to knead this flour, this just needs to come together in a doughy mass. I'm not really kneading it. I'm just making sure that it's all gathered up. And this is about what you want it to look like. It's all just gathered up. It doesn't really resemble dough. And when you try to stretch it, there is there's no gluten formed or anything, so it just it tears. It's a dough that tears. So we are going to let it rest for an hour. So now that that dough has been formed into kind of a loose-ish ball, we're going to cover it and let it sit at room temperature for about an hour, and then we're going to come back and do what is called a stretch and a fold. 
covering the dough with a lid is very important. You could also use plastic wrap or a damp tea towel. This prevents the dough from having any crusty or hard spots. So now our time is up and we are going to start the stretch and fold. This time, when I pull the dough, it has a very nice stretch to it. It does not tear as easily as it did before it rested for an hour. This is because the dough has now been able to create some gluten and that is what allows it to be so stretchy. You can wet your hands a little bit and go around the dough to help it unstick from the bowl. And then we are going to start our first stretch and fold. Divide your bowl into four quarters and you will grab one portion in one of the quarters of the dough. You will stretch it out and you will fold it on top. And then you will turn your bowl one quarter, clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever one you want. And then you once again stretch the dough up and you fold it over and then you turn your bowl a quarter again, stretch it up and fold it over until you have gone full circle. Once you have completed your last stretch and fold, you will cover your dough with your lid or plastic wrap and let this dough rest for a half an hour. I did say that we are going to perform two sets of stretch and folds. So after this half hour is up, we're going to open up our dough again and perform the exact same procedure one more time. And then you're going to cover your dough and let it bulk ferment for seven to 10 hours. So I'm gonna be speaking quietly because my children are asleep. Now our dough has been bulk fermenting for about 10 hours. And so now we're gonna take it out and we're going to shape it into a little bowl and let it rest one more time before we stick it into the oven to bake and have that delicious sourdough bread. It's very convenient to let your dough rise overnight while you're sleeping. That way the bread is fermenting and doing lots of work while you are snoozing. Here I'm putting some flour in my fingers to help it not stick to my fingers as I pull the dough out of the bowl. There will be some remnants of dough that are stuck to the bowl so you can pull those off and add them to your dough. Turn your dough out onto a floured surface and now we're going to shape it into a little bowl. So you're going to pretend that your dough has four corners and you're going to grab two opposing corners and you're going to be pulling them towards each other. So you're going to do that on one side and then you're going to do the other two corners. Then you're going to take your dough and you're going to flip it over with the seam side down. Now you're going to carefully try to shape it into a circle. You can put your hands on either side of your dough and kind of tuck and roll the ball towards yourself so the top of the dough creates a tight, nice skin. Now we're going to grab some parchment paper. You're gonna cut out a piece that's a little bit bigger than your little bool that you have. It's going to act as a sling. Now place your shaped dough onto the parchment paper and then we can lift it up, like I said, in a sling and put it back into the bowl and cover it and let it rise one more hour. About half an hour before your dough is finished rising, we are going to turn on the oven. This sourdough recipe calls for a Dutch oven. I bought mine from Costco and it was $70 for two of them. To make fresh homemade sourdough bread, you do not need to go out and buy the most expensive French Dutch ovens. Your typical Costco Dutch oven works beautifully. So now that we've created our bowl and we put it into the parchment paper sling, it's gonna sit in the bowl for another one to two hours as it rises. Now about half an hour before the bowl has finished doing its rise, you're gonna turn on your oven to 450 degrees, um, but you're gonna do it with the Dutch oven inside. That way the Dutch oven heats up and then it's gonna help create the steam inside that's gonna help it rise. With half an hour left for the dough to rise, I'm gonna start preheating the oven. I'm going to take two ice cubes and put them into the Dutch oven and put the Dutch oven into the regular oven. Using ice cubes like this is a neat little trick to help create lots of steam inside of the Dutch oven that helps your bread rise. 
Once the oven is preheated, I'm going to take out the dough and now it's time for scoring with a sharp razor blade. When scoring your bread, hold your razor at about 15 degree angle. This allows for the most oven spring. Oven spring is the amount that your bread is able to open up out of this cut that you are making right here. And we want bread that has the most oven spring that we can possibly get. Pull out your Dutch oven very carefully using oven mitts or silicone gloves. If you have them, your Dutch oven is going to be extremely hot. Be very careful. Now we're going to take the lid off and you're going to use the parchment paper sling once again to lift up your dough and put the whole entire thing into that oven. Now another trick that I have is once again to use ice. Take an ice cube and tuck it behind the parchment paper and then put a lid on top. This once again is going to create even more steam to help your bread rise. After 20 minutes of baking with the lid on, we're going to open the oven and take off the Dutch oven lid and let your bread to continue baking for another half an hour. We want the crust to develop a beautiful golden color and have a really lovely crunchy texture. So now our sourdough bread is ready. Our house is full of yummy, delicious sourdough smell. I'm gonna take it out of the oven and we're gonna have a look at how beautiful it is. Obviously it's extremely hot, so be very careful when you pull this out. And there you go. Look at that lovely, beautiful bread. So we take it out of the oven. Push this further away so the kids can't get to it. And now we let it be a finished sourdough bread boule. It is beautiful and it tastes just as good as it looks. And my kids really, really love it as a breakfast food and it's delicious for sandwiches. There's nothing more satisfying than being able to create a delicious bread for yourself and your family and knowing exactly which ingredients go into it and knowing that you could bake bread whenever you want and you don't need to go buy it from the store. Um, do you like your bread? Yeah. Need some more. You want more bread? Yeah. More bread? I hope you like this video and this recipe. Please comment down below if you did indeed create this bread for yourself. Please give us a thumbs up and share this video with anyone else who you think might want to create their first sourdough boule. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, we have lots coming up on more sourdough and gardening, homeschooling, parenting, mindset, and of course, our first love, travel.